this episode of The Natural Plastic Surgeon. Back, I have super oily skin. Okay. What's the best drugstore skincare line for oily skin? Oh, drugstore. Right. This, this drives me insane because yeah. it's like you walk into, I mean, like I used to think Neutrogena was a really good skincare line. Mm -hmm. And then I look at some of the products they have, their, their chemical, the, you know, some of the ingredients they have in it. And yes, some of the active ingredients that you mentioned are still the same. But then you look at the other things like parabens and all this other sure. stuff that can cause inflammation. It's actually really important. I did a, I did a food sensitivity test. And nice. there's a really good one out there. It's called Cyrex. It's a C-Y-R-E-X mm -hmm. uh, food sensitivity test. I was off the charts. Oh, wow. I was sensitive to everything, right? And yeah. just like, I'm like, what, what's going on? And if you actually do some research into it, most people should. This is the Natural Plastic Surgeon Podcast. We've got a special guest on the show for you today. She is Mallory Hoyle. Okay. That's she me. is our esthetician here in our practice. And uh, yes, I am a plastic surgeon. And we do a lot of plastic surgery here, but we do a lot of other things. You know, I feel like we're a head to toe kind of business in terms of it's great if your boobs look awesome, but if your skin is bad, who really cares? Right. You know what I mean? It's just like basics. And skincare is basic, is like the basic level. When you look at somebody, the first thing you notice is their skin. Instantly. Yeah. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about Mallory. She is from North Carolina which is the state where I'm from's little cousin down on the bottom. It is. So I'm from Virginia. She's from North <laughs> Carolina. So we have some, some good things to talk about there. You've been working in the skincare industry for about th past three years um, as a result, result of your own battle with acne. Yes. Um, you attended the Avita Institute of Los Angeles and you're a Zio Skincare Certified Specialist, which is awesome. It's really hard to do. Zio Skincare is the product line that we carry in the office. It's fantastic. So after your training, you actually worked at several places, uh, dermatology offices. You were a lead esthetician specializing in aging management and acne prior to joining our team here at Barrett, uh, Barrett Medical Spa. And you've been an incredible addition. Our patients love you. Thank you. Um, and they are getting great, beautiful skin. Yes. So, Melanie, we're lucky to have you part of our team. What um, what can you share about what keeps you motivated? What's what's kind of driven you these past three years and gotten you into this? Sure, yeah. Well, like you said, skin is one of the first things you notice when you look at someone, and that can kind of determine how someone feels about themselves. So um, taking social anxiety into account, depression, there are a lot of um, mental things that come into play with our skin condition. So that's mm -hmm. what got me into skincare initially. Mm -hmm. I was in college and was plagued with cystic hormonal acne wow. um, as soon as I turned 20. And I kind of missed the teenage acne, had perfect skin in middle school, high school. And then, like I said, 20, boom, it just appeared almost overnight. You, in, in middle school, you're like, ha, 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 I've got good Yeah, skin. totally. Like, I'm like, oh, miss I missed that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was so depressed, would oh not gosh. go anywhere without makeup, you know, waited until it was nighttime mm -hmm. to run errands or anything like that. And um, long story short, I met an esthetician who... Um, clear up my skin and just help build my confidence back socially. And I well, decided I yeah. wanted to help other people. Now tell me about that. Is, is that a vicious cycle when you have acne and you're trying to cover up with makeup? If you're not using the right makeup, is yeah. that just make it worse and worse? It does. 100%. Okay. So maybe you were like, you didn't, before you met this esthetician, tell yeah. me about that. But Mac makeup, you uh, know, yeah. um, CVS, not that anything's wrong with over the counter skincare, but it's not great, especially okay. when you're trying to deal with something that's deep within the skin. So, yeah. um, a lot of mistakes that definitely just kept repeating that vicious cycle. Well, what were some of the mistakes that you were making? Makeup choices okay. for sure. Um, diet, I'm highly gluten intolerant. I had no idea. And yeah. you're from the South. So our diet oh is like based off gluten and dairy and, yeah. you know, butter and everything. So I had to really take a look at diet. Um, makeup was huge. Okay. For sure. Mm -hmm. And just lifestyle, getting enough sleep, proper hydration yeah. throughout the day is, is huge. And then of course, products. What okay. are you using Skin on a care. daily basis? That was huge as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, that's fantastic. I'm glad you had that kind of aha moment. Yeah. And um, you've really kind of opened my eyes in terms of a lot of the things that um, go on with skincare. We actually, we have a lot of questions. We have some, we have some questions from our uh, followers and we yeah. also have some kind of the top questions that we found um, from some sites here that, that a lot of people have asked about skincare. And one of the things you mentioned was over-the-counter products like CVS. Yeah. 
you know, cause a lot of people are asking, what can I, uh, I, I lead a busy life and I have a strict budget. What are, what are the bare necessities that I need for my skin? Right. So, Common question. Yeah. Bare necessities would be cleanser, a good toner and a good exfoliator. Okay. Um, Is this something that somebody could get at CVS or like, what do you suggest? I, I think that there are certain things you can get over mm-hmm. the counter, like a good salicylic cleanser. You can definitely get from mm-hmm. Walgreens or CVS because it's the same active ingredient. But when you get into more targeted treatments like serums, you know, medical grade retinol and mm-hmm. retin-A, those things, unfortunately, you can't buy over the counter. And what happens is you're spending, you're saving money buying a $12 cleanser, but think about the amount of times you're going to have to try something different. You could have spent $40, $50 on a, you know, quality cleanser and actually ended up saving money. Right. So that's my thing too. It's like, you know, we're talking about your skin, you're going around, you're showing everybody your face every single day. It's like, why are you messing around? Why are you trying? When your car's broken, you take it to a mechanic to fix it. (laughs) Yeah. You could go to mechanic school, learn how to do it. Um, but uh, it really blows my mind. Every time people go, they go to Neiman Marcus and they trust the person behind the counter that just has this, just a sales clerk yeah. has, has some bullet points about the product. They really don't know anything about it. They don't know how to diagnose skin. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why are we messing around with our skin when it, when it comes to buying products? Like why are we experimenting with our own skin? It just Absolutely. blows my mind. You know, the products that we carry in our office is the Zio Skin Health Abaji product line. Yes, amazing. I think it's, I think it's the best out there. That's the most research driven. And I looked at all the different product lines. There's some really good ones out there and mm-hmm. some not so good ones, but in terms of value, it's, it's, actually cheaper 100 percent. it's cheaper than what you can get at like when you buy at neiman marcus yeah i'm staring at neiman marcus that's why i'm mentioning <laughs> that no offense anyway. but you know macy's or wherever you go where yeah. it's just like oh it must it's 500 dollars. it must be good not necessarily right. we we'll use the perfect word it, it's yeah. experimenting so right. that first thing you buy might not work the second one the third one you go down the down the list and then you, you're a thousand dollars in and you don't have anything you like right so, yeah. And your skin's getting punished. Exactly. And, and that's the thing is like, you could be using a salicylic when you really need to be using like, you know, uh, something more enzymatic or maybe lighter because you right. have acne. So it's like, you know, um, you know, go to a professional, go to a you know, licensed esthetician, go to a doctor, yes. you know, um, that it, it could save you so much trouble. Yes. I have here, this is back to the drugstore thing. I have, su- okay. this is from Mac Lac, M-A-C underscore L-A- K. Shout out MacLac. MacLac. I have super oily skin. Okay. What's the best drugstore skincare line for oily skin? Oh, drugstore. Right. This this drives me insane because yeah. it's just like you walk into, I mean, like I used to think Neutrogena was a really good skincare line. Mm-hmm. And then I look at some of the products they have, their, their chemical, the, you know, some of the ingredients they have in it. And yes, mm-hmm. some of the active ingredients that you mentioned are still the same. But then you look at the other things like parabens and all this, all this other sure. stuff that can cause inflammation in the skin. And it's just like, yeah, you're getting the active ingredient, but then you're getting these cheaper inert materials. Additives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like fragrances. Right. You guys, your skincare shouldn't smell pretty, okay? It should smell like nothing. Um, <laughs> unless there's an actual product in there, like mulberry extract, that's actually doing something for your skin that you can actually smell, you don't want perfumes in Agreed. your skin. And and I feel like you really just don't know what you're getting at a, a, at a drugstore. What are your thoughts on that for Absolutely. super super oily? What should they do the, instead of going to the drugstore? The only thing that really comes to mind is, is maybe a, a sulfur mask or... Mm. Um, they have some of those charcoal masks. But the thing about oil is the only thing that can pull oil out of your skin is oil. Yeah. It's the only thing that it actually links to. So Interesting. putting on the Biore strips, it's it sounds like a good idea. It's yeah. doing nothing. What are those, is that where the pulls off of the blackheads? That's in theory. Yeah. Okay, that's what okay. it's supposed to I do. Used to, I did it that takes off that top layer of okay. skin. Okay. But then you're left with the plug that's down deep in the follicle. And okay. that stays there. Okay. So then it resurfaces and you go back to CVS and buy your strips and yeah. just kind of keep doing the same thing. There's there's no real solution to oily skin in a drugstore, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Regular facials, good extractions, uh-huh. um, and surprisingly using a facial oil helps with oil production. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I never even thought about that. Um, you know, I also like how you mentioned that it, it has to do with the total your diet. Yes what's going on in your body, your sleep. You know what I mean? It's like your skin is the largest organ in your body. It's Mm -hmm. a reflection of what's going on inside of your body. So if you're not getting good sleep, if you're eating food that you're intolerant to, Mm -hmm. or if you have a chronic illness or disease or leaky gut, all that stuff's going to be reflected in your skin. It is. Yeah. I just got gluten nuked last week. What's that mean? I ordered something that was gluten free Yeah, and it was not. Oh, how'd you figure that out? So it's like instantly. (laughs) Well, I did a food sensitivity test, which is 
something I actually wanted to touch on during the podcast is yeah. figuring out what you're intolerant to or sensitive to, because that can be an, not an easy switch, but a change that makes a big difference mm -hmm. in your skin. So anyways, I ordered something with gluten-free toast Yes, and maybe 30 minutes after I ate it, I started to get a headache. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It got a little sick to my stomach mm -hmm. and I thought, oh my gosh. And then maybe 48 hours later started breaking out. So it, it's a real connection to the skin as far as like food sensitivities, being intolerant to certain yeah. ingredients. So that's huge for a lot of people. And, um, you know, if you have heartburn, oh, take a pill. If you have um, all these different elements, right? We've yeah. been kind of taught to put a bandaid on it opposed to looking at the root right. cause the root and where cause. it's really coming from. And with skin, I think it really does boil down to what you're using and, and, and what your body is trying to tell you. Yes. So we could dive a little bit deeper into this and I'll just spend a quick moment on this. This is actually really important. I did a, I did a food sensitivity test and nice. there's a really good one out there. It's called Cyrex. It's a C Y R E X, mm -hmm. uh, food sensitivity test. I was off the charts. Oh, wow. I was sensitive to everything, right? And yeah. just like, I'm like, what, what's going on? And if you actually do some research into it, most people shouldn't be sensitive to anything. Mm. At most, maybe two sensitivities. And that's rare. That's like 5% of the population. 95% mm. of the population should not have any sensitivities. Wow. Maybe you have one sensitivity, but to have more than one sensitivity. So what I, what I found out is I had leaky gut syndrome. And so I had to, I had to actually treat that. So I, you know, yes. there's, because if you have leaky gut, you're sensitive to everything because everything just pouring into your bloodstream. You're right. going to have antibodies, so all that stuff. So um, you could take a deeper dive into that stuff. I, I'll let you guys search that out on the internet. Yeah. Um, but let's get back to some basics. Let's okay? do it. Um, what, um, what is like a basic skincare regimen that you recommend for sure. somebody? Basic skincare regimen, um, definitely you need a cleanser. There's this big myth going around that you don't need to wash your face, mm -hmm. just splash it with water, but uh -huh. cleanser to get off the dirt, oil, just the, all the environmental stressors of the day. Okay. So definitely a cleanser. A toner is really important. It's going to balance your pH levels, kind of replenish the hydration factors after you use a cleanser, and then that preps your skin for whatever you use afterwards. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about this. You know, we don't live in a, a, a nature environment anymore, right? right? We're not living out in the woods where we're surrounded by beautiful air, beautiful sunlight and right. natural exfoliants all around us. So it's like you need a cleanser. You, you're going to have, you have, you, if you're sitting in your car every day, you're exposed to environmental toxins, yes. you know, it's all building up on your skin, makeup, all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I'm with you. I mean, if we all lived out in the woods and caves and maybe <laughs> we wouldn't need it, but we don't, we, we live in a pretty toxic environment with yes, a lot of, that's a lot of the problems. reality. Yeah. Totally. Um, after a cleanser, I say get a, get a good serum, something that's specific to your skincare needs. Mm -hmm. If you're working on anti-aging slash sunspots, hyperpigmentation, vitamin C is amazing. The ZO okay. vitamin C is um, really amazing mm -hmm. because it's stabilized vitamin C and not all vitamin C is the same, right. um, which is something to note. Uh, hyaluronic acid is No, that's is true huge. because it, you'll see, oh, it has vitamin C, but it's already yeah. oxidized. You put it on your right. skin, it's already scavenged its free radicals by just exactly. sitting exposed to the air. That's the benefit of vitamin C. It's a free radical scavenger. Yes. And if you if you have it in aqueous form, um, you have to it has to be stabilized. And, that, and that's what people don't realize is that looking for simple ingredients and, and they're not packaged well, uh, not going to do you any good. Yeah, exactly. So just a serum that's targeted to whatever specific concern you want to treat. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, a nice face oil or a moisturizer, mm -hmm. something to never forget is sunscreen. Yeah. Definitely want to use your sunscreen. We had um, someone ask if you need to wear sunscreen on cloudy days on Instagram. And <laughs> that's, it's funny. It seems like an obvious answer, but Everyone asks that question, and the answer is yes. Yeah. You definitely need sunscreen, whether it's rain or shine. Clouds partially filter out sunlight, but not the rays. Right. So you're still getting those UVA, UVB rays. <sighs> That's the thing. It's it's uh, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, sunlight's great, it's natural for you, and I, and I agree with that for a certain extent. But sure. it just depends how much damage do you want. I mean, like we don't have as much protection in our ozone from the mm. sun, and it's like we live in Southern California. We're getting right. a lot more exposure than our bodies actually evolve to handle. So it's, it's, to me, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, well, do you want wrinkles and sunspots on your face? No, then wear sunscreen, <laughs> exactly. you know? And, and that's another key is, is, is find a, um, I like physical blocking agents for sunscreen because they don't bind to your skin. A lot of people don't realize that, that there's a difference between 
physical blocking agents like titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. The zinc oxide is like when you get that white stuff on your nose when you see the lifeguards. Yeah. Um, just completely blocks the sun, doesn't bind with your skin, just sits on the surface. And then you have other like products that have like benzenes and all this other stuff. And mm-hmm. you gotta be, you gotta be careful with those because some of those can be, actually interact with your skin. If you're having a sensitive skin and breakouts, yes. you want to avoid those chemical sunblocks unless you're going to be out in the water and you need something that's going to be waterproof. Right. Um, so that's, that's why I'm, I'm typically a physical sunblock kind Physical's of person. Physical the way to go. Yeah. yeah. And more people are talking about that, which is awesome. That's great. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, um, one other thing I want to ask you about regimen. What about exfoliation? Exfoliation is key. Yeah. Always. Everyone needs to exfoliate. Um, when you're a kid, your dead skin cells take care of themselves. They slough off on their own. Yeah. And then uh, as early as 12 years old, our skin cells stop um, replenishing themselves. So those dead skin cells stay right on top mm-hmm. and then they build up over time. They build up, build up, build up, unless you're exfoliating yeah. and sloughing those dead skin cells off. And doing so gets rid of the dead skin cells, but it also makes room for your new cells to come to the surface. Right. Which is it's, the goal. Yeah. So it's like a, your cell turnover, right? You get a yes. completely new set of skin cells every six weeks. And people that don't stimulate that process start to get slowed down to eight weeks, to 10 weeks, right. to 12 weeks. And guess what happens? Pigment builds up. That dullness p- builds up. You mm-hmm. get clogged pores because all you got these dead skin cells just hanging out on top of your skin. Right. So exfoliation, I, I look at that. It's like it helps stimulate your cell turnover. So active exfoliation every day. It's just a great stimulation for your skin. And I, I exfoliate every single day. I use like five different CO products. Nice. Every day. Yeah. And, and people are like, why is your skin looking so good? I was like, well, a combination of Botox and <laughs> living in Virginia, studying in libraries my whole life. Yeah. And then um, just really good skincare, yeah. I think. And uh, it's really made a difference. Yeah. I love the polish, the Zio polish. Yeah. Everyone's favorite. Oh, it's, it's great. It does have some anti-inflammatory properties in it, which is also good. You want to calm the skin down. Mm-hmm. Sebum, which is the oil in our skin, is very um, inflammatory. Sure. So, all right, let's move on. Um, why am I still breaking out after 40? Good question. Yeah. A lot of people have that question. Um Kind of like what I touched base on in the beginning, you assume if you miss those teenage breakouts that you're in the clear, you don't have to worry about acne and then throw in some hormones and stress, air pollution, um, you know, all the things that come out of diet, lifestyle, and and you you got acne in yeah. your 20s, 30s, 40s. It's crazy. It's not uncommon. And um, again, just to revisit what we already talked about, looking into food sensitivities, um, you know, your your day-to-day lifestyle, how much right. sleep are you getting, how much water are you drinking a day, mm-hmm. what does what your diet look like? Those are really important as far as hormone balance goes. And then, of course, some people have deeper issues, and then it's best to check in with like a hormone specialist or, you know, whatever you prefer. It's, it's tough because a lot of the things that, uh, this especially affects women is birth control. Yes. Birth control pills are, it's, um, obviously getting pregnant when you don't want to is not good. Um, but, uh, the, the, the damage that birth control does to people's skin is just, is is difficult. And pregnancy. A lot Pre- of women. Yeah. yeah. Pregnancy yeah. is, is brutal in terms of, because your, your body is gearing up towards providing for the baby and not so much your skin. Right. Yeah. So you get massive production of pigmentation, melasma, all this other stuff. But guess what? That happens when you take the pill too. A lot of exactly. people don't realize that. It's like I started noticing it in his brown mustache. What is that? <laughs> I'm like, that's melasma. And the first thing I ask them is like, are you on the pill? And they're like, yeah. yeah. And then they're like, no one ever told me that this can happen to my right. skin, which is, that's frustrating. Yeah, think, it is I think, frustrating. I think everybody should have that discussion with their doctor before it they should start. totally be disclosed. And then the thing about birth control is it takes, you know, it's not like you stop it and then it's right. out of your system. No. It can take up years to kind of get back on your regular scheduled program, which is even more frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. huge for, for, um, any breakouts over 20, I definitely tell people start looking into your hormonal balance Yep, for sure. Okay. Let's, let's touch on that brown spots uh, and melasma a little bit more. So one question we have is where did I get these brown spots, hyperpigmentation in my <laughs> face? How can I lighten them? Yeah. It's everyone's question. Yeah. Um, where do they come from? They've yeah. probably been there for a while yeah. and there's things that make them darker and more obvious. Okay. So sunspots and age spots can actually start a- around childhood. So some of the sunspots that people get might not be from vacation they took last week. It yeah. could be from the summer before when, when they were outside every day or wow. when they were, yeah, six years old out yeah. playing every day. So 
those are tricky. It can take, um, sometimes, you know, an hour, someone's out in the sun and they get darker. And then there's other cases where it's, um, pigmentation that's been way deep in their skin. And then it decides to creep up right. and, and shows up in the form of age spots or sunspots, but they're definitely treatable. Yeah. Thankfully. We, yeah. We also talked about melasma also that, that could be from pregnancy or yes. birth control and also sun damage, which makes it worse. Definitely. Yeah. And, and again, sunscreen is huge. The sun, the UVA and UVB rays will make them darker and right. it pushes them deeper into the skin. So, so if you do have sunspots, age spots, hyperpigmentation, sunscreen, 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 yeah, for sure. Um, to stop it from getting worse. Exactly. Okay. My favorite products that we carry um, from ZO to help with pigmentation, vitamin C is huge, mm -hmm. just in, again, suppressing those melanocytes and making sure it doesn't get any darker. Yeah. And then you go on the side of lightening. And um, I love all our retinols. Well, let's back up. So yeah. let's, let's understand um, melanocytes. Melanocytes okay. are the cells in our face and our skin that produce pigment. Right. So, um, I think we all have the same amount of melanocytes or perhaps some have yes. a higher concentration of them based off of ethnicity. And then the ability to produce pigment is upregulated in some people, uh, based on genetics and then also based on environmental exposure. Right. Yeah. So there's a chemical agent called tyrosinase and that's what tells your melanocytes to release or not. So everyone okay. has the same amount of melanocytes. Some of them are just more active. Yeah than other people. Um, so yeah, the first thing to do is suppress those melanocytes. Right. So they're not producing. Right. It's like, pigment. Hey, melanocytes calm down. Right? Chill out. So yeah. yeah. So it's, we get that with a lot of, uh, post-surgical, uh, inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Yes. So you can see where there would normally not be any darkness. They, we have an incision and that, that whole area becomes hyperpigmented. Right. And that's because we've upregulated their response yes. because of the surgical trauma. Right. So the first thing to do is block those melanocytes. That's a big mistake people make is not, first of all, cutting them off yeah. and then you can lighten. So yeah. there's a couple steps. It's suppressing those melanocytes and then we can focus on lightening and brightening everything right. up. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. like if you, if you have to, it's source control, right? So you have right. to like get the, get that stimulating source under control. Is it too much oil? Is it too much sebum? Is it too much sun exposure? Is it hormones? What's going on that's causing the hyperactive melanocytes, calm exactly. that down and then actually chemically suppress them. And then you can work on lightning, which lightning is, them. tell us about exactly. that. So our favorites here are the Zio retinol skin brighteners. They come in different percentages, which is nice because it's customizable for people that are maybe a little bit more sensitive mm -hmm. for patients that want a more aggressive approach. You can put them on a higher percentage. So I love those. They also just came out with bright alive. Well, yeah. So let's back up. So yeah. is that, you're talking about hydroquinone based products, hydroquinone based okay. products and retinol and retinol. Yeah. So it's, Double whammy. So the way I like to look at retinol, so first of all, the um, the two most heavily studied skincare products out there are retinol mm -hmm. and vitamin C. Both of them have a double randomized control studies in terms of improving wrinkles and improving pigmentation. Wow. Retinol works. It's like a tiny little, it's like, it's like gasoline. Yeah, it's like a tiny little molecule that goes all the way down to this, to the cell nucleus and it's it just ignites everything. Right. So it's just, it just, when you want hydroquinone to really work, you pair it with retinol. Mm. It just makes everything work really much better. Right. Yeah. So, so those you are were great. mentioning, you were mentioning retinol skin brightener. Yes. The okay. retinol skin brighteners. No brainer. Yeah. And then we have the pigment control and pigment control plus blending cream. Both of those are forms of hydroquinone. Mm -hmm. um, those are great. And then bright alive, which is new to Zio. It's a non retinol, non hydroquinone yes. skin brightener, which is exciting for, for people that don't want to go that route, or maybe they want well, some lightening while they're pregnant. Yeah. It's, it's just a great alternative. That, that's, that's true because the downside of this gasoline molecule called retinol <laughs> that <laughs> works really well is there's an adjustment phase. It takes yeah. about six to eight weeks to kind of adjust to using retinol right. and you can have, you can have red flaky, irritated skin, dry skin. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't tolerate that. And I'm just like, you know, if you want a, a sexy body, it's not going to happen by sleeping on the couch. <laughs> you got to go to the gym. You yeah. Gotta work it's going to hurt a little bit. Yeah. It's going to hurt a little <laughs> bit, you know? So it's like the same exact thing is true for your skin. Why, Absolutely. How would it be any different? It's an organ just like your muscles in your body. It is. Agreed. Right. Yeah. And then it, for an even, you know, more aggressive approach, of course, peels are fantastic for yep. lightening pigmentation. Right. And again, just overall maintenance, you know, once you have light in those spots, you still need to protect your skin with sunscreen, daily power defense, a good antioxidant. Mm -hmm. um, um, vitamin C, of course, but um, yeah, our retinol skin brighteners and the hydroquinone yeah. are it's it's amazing how far they've changers. come. Yeah, I know yeah. it's because the old Abaji when he came out in the eighties, the stuff was really harsh, and so now we're getting really good, effective products that don't have as much 
side effects. Yeah. Anticipated reactions exactly. is what they're saying. So, mm-hmm. um, which I think is fantastic. All right. I want to change gears a little bit. And I, I actually saw a patient today who had large pores. Yeah. So one of our questions is, is it actually possible to minimize pores? Mm-hmm. And what causes large okay. pores? It is possible to minimize them, but not necessarily through products. Okay. So, so there's a lot of marketing, um, shrink your pores, smaller pores, and those are kind of gimmicky. You can shrink, you know, minimize the pore size with lasers, uh-huh. more high technology sort of treatments, but, um, our pores actually solidify and liquefy. That's where the open and closed term comes from. Okay. It actually started from estheticians. So it's our fault. Okay. Um, in facials, we use steam yeah. to open the pores, which yeah. basically means liquefy them. Okay. And then when they close, they're solidifying oh. the stuff inside. Okay. So that's where the open and closed things come from. So your pores don't actually open or close. Okay. But, um, they can get bigger, you know, if you have mm-hmm. a, a lot of blackheads or a big breakout, it so can certainly stretch the that's, pore. That's what I, that's what I, I've heard. And, um, and, and when you start to get some really good control of your oil and sebum production, you yes. can actually, you, you get less volume of stuff inside your pores. Exactly. So the appearance actually goes down. The appearance. Yeah. Yeah. And I've actually, um, when you step into more of my territory in the operating room, I can actually shrink them with a CO2 laser. And that's just because I'm causing cellular tightening and um, yeah. myofibroblast uh, production so that it shrinks these dermal elements in the skin. Which you is, can see it almost instantly. With yeah, the, you the can. CO2. Yeah. And it tightens up, but, um, you know, that's, that's a little more involved with it than a daily skincare Definitely. regimen. But the sulfur mask by Zio is great for yep. pore size because like you said, it limits the oil production, which in turn makes the pores seem right. smaller because you don't have so much oil production going on. Your, your glands look smaller. Great. Yeah. So instead of a, you know, king size pillow, you know, you have a twin size pillow. Exactly. Yeah, cool. <laughs> no more Biore strips. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's let's move on. This is a question. This is a different subject. Uh, Rosemary Elizabeth Griffin asks, keratosis pilaris tips. Oh. Do you know what that is? I do. Okay. I do. I'll tell you a funny story. I had it my whole life. I remember going to the Durham and getting it. They would have like the, you know, the nitrous gas and like freeze it off. So painful. Yeah. And it went away after I stopped eating gluten. Yeah. It has a lot to do with food sensitivities huh. and intolerances. Okay. Yeah. But something else you could do is like our dual action scrub, something yeah. with the salicylic and just really get in there a few times a week. See, and, that, I, and exfoliate. I've had that, you get them on extensor surfaces. What does that mean? It means the back of your arms, right. their thighs. If you don't know what it is, it's like, it's like little goose, like little chicken bumps yeah. that don't go away. And it's like clogged pores, a little clogged hair sometimes. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, when I was really getting them bad, in fact, when I was, eating a lot of gluten. So I had no idea. I would actually, I would do an exfoliant scrub with the, with the Zio scrub and they would go away, nice. but I'd have to do that every morning. And now I don't have to do it probably because I changed my diet. Probably but, uh, so. It's interesting. So there are your tips, uh, Rosemary, <laughs> is uh, exfoliation, salicylic. Yeah. And then um, check your gluten. Yeah. All right, cool. We, we have all kinds of regimens for people. And this one, this question is from, um, uh, I guess, Cy- uh, Serenia Miranda. And she said... What should a 27 going on 28 year old be incorporating in their skincare routine? Good question. Actually, yeah, yeah. definitely some retinol. Okay. Retinol already in yeah, the 20s. Yeah, okay. definitely. I okay. think after 25, retinol after 25? and retin A. Okay. For sure. Like what concentration? Are we talking about? Very low. Okay. Yeah. So like a like a baby dose. A baby dose. Okay. At that point, it's it's more preventative. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, and, and then what about vitamin C at that point? Vitamin C is great. Yeah. I agree with that. I feel that. like that's a, it's a no brainer because it doesn't really have any anticipated reactions like uh, redness and stuff like that, that right. retinol can have. Um, so it should be, I think, uh, and, and it also has one of the most well-documented amounts of evidence for, sure. in terms of, um, wrinkle prevention and pigment reduction. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay. So what's been, um, what questions do you have that, that's come across, um, your, Uh, workplace, uh, anything today that you encountered or anything in the past week that that are pretty common that you want to talk about? Yeah. So we touched base on a lot of the most frequently asked questions. I have one here that it it sounds silly, but I get asked a lot. Um, why do I have more wrinkles on one side of my face than the other? Really? Yeah. Okay. And, um, it has a lot to do with how you sleep. 
believe it or not, what side you sleep on. Um, a lot of people have more wrinkles on the side of their eyes or face on the left side because that's our driving side. So Ooh. you're exposed to the sun longer on that side of the face. But you know, there's a picture, um, and we can maybe link to it in the show notes, uh, of this truck driver <gasps> Who, uh, have you guys seen this? It's Where, insane. Yeah, he was a truck driver for like 30 to 40 years. And you could see the whole left side of his face is completely more wrinkled than the right side yes. of his face. They so put that, him under the woods lamp. Is that what they did? Yeah, there's so much oh sun damage. God. Yeah, so yeah. that... That That's goes to one. show you the effect, the environmental effect of UV light Absolutely. Um, on your face. Yeah. Or sunlight. So that's, that's the answer to that one. That's where more wrinkles come from. Yeah. On but I side. do, you know what? I do notice that with filler too. When I get my filler patients yeah. and they, they have a crease that's bigger on their nasal labia line versus right. the other side. And I'm like, look, there's some asymmetry here. Like what side are you better? Are you sleeping on? Yeah. And they're like, I always sleep on my left side. Yeah. And it's uh, true. Like, maybe we should try alternating that or sleep on your back. Definitely. J-Lo sleeps on her back, so. J-Lo does? <laughs> she looks amazing. I want what she's doing. All right, so um, barrier dysfunction. Yes. This has been a topic that has actually gotten um, some interesting research done in, in lately, and I was wondering if you could chat about it. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so barrier dysfunction is um, really the root cause of most skin problems. Mm -hmm. Barrier dysfunction uh, comes in different forms if it's left untreated. Okay. So it can turn into acne, rosacea, uh, psoriasis, all of the things that people, you know, have issues with on their skin, but it, uh, on a smaller scale, it's basically your skin's microbiome. Okay. So the balance of good and bad bacteria. Um, and so just there's like, bacteria that live on your face. There is. Yeah. Okay. Everywhere really. Yeah. So when that bacteria isn't balanced, you don't have a protective layer okay. on the skin. So you can think of it, um, kind of like a cell nucleus, that surrounds that cell. It protects mm -hmm. what comes in, what goes out. It's kind of like the control center. Yeah. And when that barrier isn't there, you have nothing kind of refereeing or controlling what goes in, what goes out. Mm -hmm. So you end up with a lot of sensitivity, irritation. Um, that's the main way to diagnose barrier dysfunction is sensitivity. Mm -hmm. People that say, oh, I'm so sensitive. Really only about 15% of the population is truly sensitive. And that's genetic sensitivity. Right. And then the other 85% is something we call acquired sensitivity. So it comes from using the wrong products, the mm -hmm. environmental stressors we talked about, diet, yeah. all of those things. So most people are not truly sensitive. It's acquired sensitivity, um, otherwise known as barrier dysfunction. Yeah. So um, treating that is basically just repairing that barrier, um, lots of antioxidants, niacinamides, mm -hmm. lots of repairing agents. And you can think about like brick and mortar, right? So the bricks being uh, part of your skin and then the concrete around it. And when any one of those bricks is missing, you have gaps and yeah. holes in the skin. So instead of the ingredients going on top of that layer of bricks, it goes straight to the bottom okay. and causes... Um, you know, irritation and things like that. So barrier dysfunction is huge when you treat anything. Some people don't have barrier dysfunction, which is great, but most people have barrier dysfunction if they are experiencing, you know, any type of skin condition that is not great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I, I went through a period of rosacea one time and, um, it's uh, it's so funny how little we know about our microbiomes in yeah. our gut, which is super, super important. We have more organisms living in our gut than we have cells in our body. Um, I mean, we have more organisms living in our gut than the population of humans on the planet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and um, it, the same is true for our skin. It's yeah. like if you ever notice that if you use something different on your skin or like, that's why antibacterial soap is kind of a no-no. Right. You know, it's like you don't... Like you don't want to get some of that. We need some of that yeah. bacteria, you know? So it's like, um, it, it's harmless. It's, it's there to kind of protect us. And it's just keeping that good bacteria, Absolutely. um, and keeping that bad bacteria out. Yeah. And it's like how you explain leaky gut syndrome, yeah. how you were sensitive to everything. Right. It's kind of like yeah. leaky gut syndrome of the skin, yeah. the barrier dysfunction. You're sensitive to everything. Right. And that's a dead giveaway that someone's dealing with barrier dysfunction. And would you treat that differently if you, if you encounter You would that? treat it differently. Yeah. Um, you want to repair the, the barrier before you try to treat any of those specific concerns. So repairing uh, barrier dysfunction is going to the root opposed to putting that Band-Aid on. Right. Yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah. I mean, we get, we, one of the things you mentioned earlier was appeal and I get a yeah. lot of patients that we, we get a lot of patients that come in. They're like, Hey, I just want to peel. I just want you to just like peel everything off. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, well, what skincare regimen are you on? And I'm like nothing. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. how do you expect this one-time treatment to kind of correct everything? It just, it just doesn't work that exactly. way. Exactly. So it's just like, we say no, sometimes these people that come in, they just want to peel to kind of peel everything off like look let's get you conditioned for six weeks yes. get the skin ready get your barrier function back before you're about to blast your skin with with acid or exactly. laser um there's just there's so much more involved it's not there's no quick fix you guys it's uh constant dedication to all of those different aspects that we talked about to really have yes. good skin health which is why Dr. Obaji's line is so great because he really, really focuses on barrier dysfunction. Went to a really great seminar um, that Zio held. And the first 30, 45 minutes was all on barrier dysfunction, yeah. which is huge because people really don't touch on that or, or talk about, about it. And his line really is um, focused on repairing that dysfunction, which is amazing. Got it. Yeah. All right. So we're going we're gonna to finish up here with the last question. What's your top you know, skincare tip? that you can recommend to people. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, you can think about this one for a second. I, I will tell you mine and this, this kind of changed my whole mentality about skincare and that is getting, it's a big paradigm shift from moisturizing and protecting your skin. They're like your skin needs to be protected. That mm -hmm. was a big, that was a big, it was like, it's like when they designed, when they came up with Listerine for bad breath, <laughs> hal halitosis, they came up with a yeah. term for it. Like people had Bad breath, halitosis, uh, just so they could sell more Listerine. And uh, it turns out you don't really need Listerine. If you have good oral health, you don't you don't have bad breath. So it was it's kind of a big marketing scheme. And, and and that's what happens in the 50s and 60s when they came out with, oh, you have to moisturize your skin to protect it. And I think it's... Um, I think the wrong that, that's the wrong signal we want to send to our skin cells and that we want to kind of stimulate and challenge our skin cells. It's just like if you want be if you want like I said earlier, if you want strong muscles, you go to the gym, you work out. The same is true for our skin. Absolutely. You can't just sit there and moisturize. It tells it to go to sleep. <laughs> it tells it to go to sleep and relax and become thin and transparent and then you get what sensitive skin because then you have right. barrier dysfunction. So to me, the most important concept to understand is stop moisturizing your skin. Like just, you know, you, yeah. need, you need to go the other direction. You need to kind of do things that are stimulating, more effective for your skin type um, and to really get all of that natural stuff produced on its own. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's, I'm going to use that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> no, that's my big thing. It's, and, and Abaji, and I, I learned that from Dr. Abaji himself and, and it makes, makes total sense. Why we are sitting around caking all this moisturizer on our skin is just telling our skin to do the wrong thing. Yeah, it's a lot stronger than people think. Our skin is resilient. I know. I know. Yeah. We've evolved over thousands of years. Totally. With no skincare products, we'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Um, but but that being said, now we have a bunch of more environmental toxins that we have to right. uh, inflammation in our bodies, all that stuff. The balancing have to do. act. Yeah. yeah. So all right, now your turn. My turn. I'm going to piggyback off what you said there okay. towards the end. Your skin type. I think yeah. that's huge when you you're trying to treat your skin or buy products or book a service. What what is your skin type? Mm -hmm. I think that's huge to figure out and kind of go from there because a lot of people buy for dry skin. Maybe you're really sensitive or dehydrated right. internally. Yeah. So knowing what your skin type is, is huge mm -hmm. as far as what your treatment options are, what right. products are best for you. Yeah, it's not one size fits all. It's not one size fits all. Absolutely. And then again, going back to kind of what we touched base on in the beginning is find a, find a professional. Yeah. Find an esthetician, go to, go see a derm, go see a, you know, a plastic surgeon, go to someone that is, you know, certified and able to speak to your specific needs opposed to Instagram's great, but right. the, um, advice that they're giving out, it's kind of generic. So it might not be for you. So finding something that's specific to your needs and what kind of, um, goals you have, your skin type is key. Yeah. It'll save you a lot of time. No, absolutely. Save you a lot of time. And, and, um, it, it's, it's, our skin is a valuable organ and we have to really treat it and with respect and take care of it just like anything else in our bodies. So, I mean, that's, so again, back to what I do. It's great if you got your boob job, but if your skin looks bad, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Yes. So we we're full circle here we are. at Barrett Plastic Surgery. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Mally, thanks so much for being yeah, on the show. Yeah, it was so fun. Yeah. And, um, you guys, if you have more questions about skincare, uh, please check out our website, drdanielbarrett.com. 
And uh, you can also check out the Zio Skin Health um, website. They've got a lot of the products that we carry here in the office. Yeah. And the reason why I love their product line, and I don't, I trust me, I I'm not paid by them. I'm, I don't I don't have any you know any affiliation with them other than carrying their products in the office. Um, they do the most research. They have the most uh, non-inflammatory products uh, ingredients in their products that I think work the best. So agreed. Yeah, great. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks awesome. for tuning in.